Now, our second section or chapter is meet your match. People often ask, how can I attract the right person to my profile? So this section is going to focus on that, attracting the right, nice, genuine, made for you matches. We're going to cover number one, get to know yourself. Number two, focus on shared interests. And number three, learn to spot the genuine people. That's a really, really important section. And you can, as always, ask loads of questions because we're going to be answering more of your questions at the end. So don't be shy. Please send your questions in. Absolutely. We're going to start as well with our second survey question, which is, have your friends ever told you that you're too fussy? Again, it's a yes or no answer, please. Have your friends ever told you that you're too fussy? Okay, back to getting to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Mm. So the best thing about dating over 50 is that you have more self-awareness now than you've ever had as a single person. And I really want you to use it. I want to use all your life experience to boost your chances of finding the person that's right for you, not just the person that you find the most physically attractive. Mm. So I want you to forget your standard type. And make a promise to yourself that your next relationship will be right for you in terms of personality, attachment style and interests. So my first tip on this is I want you to write your love CV. Now this might sound crazy, but you don't have to show it to anyone else. It's just something that you do for yourself. And it will give you a really good idea of what actually made you happy in your past relationships. So read your, so write your love CV and write it like you would write your job CV. Mm -hmm. So literally, I started in, I start in this position now. I started in this year, I met this person, we dated for this long and the relationship finished for this reason. But this is how I felt during the relationship. I want you to do that for all of them. And then I want you to ask yourself three questions after that. The first question is, what type of person actually made you feel happier? So this isn't the type of person that you had the most physical attraction with. This isn't the one that was passionate. This is the type of person that when you were with them, you felt comfortable, you felt relaxed. You liked the person that you were when you were with that type of person. I really make a note of that because it's not often that big passionate. It's not, is it? It's not no, the it's big... it's lovely that though. How... <gasps> yeah, it but might not be what you expect. No. But, but that, that, oh, that coming yeah. home blissful, I'm taking yeah. my shoes off, taking my bra Being off and yourself, chilled. just literally not yeah. editing anything you say. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, so they're not going to be necessarily Swedish, blonde, you know. Dumb. Yeah, black hair, <laughs> blue eyes. They're going to be the type of personality that makes you feel really good when you're with them. Then I want you to think about what your attachment style is. So your attachment style, it it's formed in your childhood and it's how you bond in relationships and it's how you cope when you're in a relationship with someone so ideally everyone would have a secure attachment style so we would all feel safe and serene and we're with a partner when when they go out to do something else we'll feel calm when they come back we're happy but you know we're fine either way ideally we'd all be secure like that some of us <laughs> have got an anxious attachment style. So because my childhood was quite turbulent in the fact that my dad moved us around with, with a different job, well, the same job, but we moved to different towns. So I was constantly having to like make new friends at school. That happened over and over again. So I've ended up with quite an anxious attachment style, which I'm trying to make work. But at the end of the day, I'm what you would call clingy. So I'm a bit clingy. I'm a bit insecure. I'm a bit needy in relationships. And as soon as I found out about attachment styles and realised that it wasn't just me being like, ah, it's a thing, I felt a lot better because now I know that I am going to kind of, I'm going to look for problems where, where they aren't necessarily there because I'm anxious. And knowing that, I can self-soothe myself and calm myself down. Or you might have an avoidant attachment style. Men, you often fall into the avoidant style, which is when things get too intense, too emotional, when there's a problem in the relationship, you don't know what to do, you'll, you will try and avoid it. So you'll shut down those conversations or you'll leave the room. It, you'll be like, no. So I want you to find out what your attachment style is because honestly, as soon as you know that, everything makes sense. Everything. Um, if you don't know what yours is, there's a really good book. You just read the book. It's got quizzes. You can find out everything. And it's got loads of tips on what to do with your attachment style. It's called Attached. It's by Dr. Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. And that will tell you everything you need to know. 
And also another thing to do is ask your friends and family what type of person they think you'd be happiest with. I mean, do, do our time with a friend or a family or one of your kids. Get them to kind of scroll through that discover section and, and talk to them about like, I think I'm looking for someone who's tall, dashing and mysterious. And they might say, well, actually, you want someone who's really funny, has got a job that's close to home because you want to curl up with them in the evenings. You know, you don't go like going out and about that much. You want like a homebody and someone who loves cooking because you don't like cooking, but you're really interested in food. Get someone else's opinion and then all of a sudden things make sense or you can stop going for the same type again and again because you have someone over your shoulder going, no, that one looks nice. They, they're the right one for you. Just try it like that to get you out of that rut. Kate, as <gasps> ever, your wisdom is astounding. I mean it. I write Julie's I script. Do, yes, you do. <laughs> when I put these things I in. I don't care. I mean it. Really, seriously, I think that's invaluable. <laughs> I didn't even know there was, there was something called attachment what style. What do you reckon yours is? It, You're secure, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I, I wouldn't have said I was, but... But I'm not. I, I'm not clingy. No, mm, at all. I not am. at all. You've, you'll notice that, like, like tomorrow when we have to say goodbye. <laughs> I'll be like, no, Julie, no. Hang on to your ankle. <laughs> but you know, there's a reason. Um, the next yeah. thing I want you to do to make sure you're finding the right person for you is to focus on shared interests. So after fifty, companionship is where you're really going to find happiness. But don't think of companionship as just like slippers, cocoa, boring, holding hands and, you know. Oh. I quite like the sound of that. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm signing up for that. It's, it's all about finding people that you like to spend time with in the same way, to have shared interests. And when you write your profile, I want you to focus it around the things that you like to do. Now, this is brilliant because if you've ever written an online dating profile, it's hard, isn't it? Mm. You have to sum yourself up. Mm. And also it's like, who likes writing about themselves? Who likes saying, I'm kind, I'm amazing, I'm loyal, I'm this, it, it, oh, no. Focus it around what you like to do and suddenly writing your profile is joyous because it's like, I like waking up early in the morning and then having a cup of English breakfast tea. Be specific because the little details really paint the picture. So I like getting up early, having a cup of English breakfast tea in my garden while I listen to the birds tweeting. And then I like to go for a country walk and have a pub lunch, that kind of thing. Make it descriptive, paint that picture because then people can visualize going on a date with you or visualize you as a partner and suddenly you, you come to life. Yeah, it makes it much easier for mm. people to ask you out on a date because they can think, totally. I can fulfill that. Yeah. I've got a, we've got a pub great lunch. pub around the corner. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. It worked for me because um. when my husband, my lovely husband Pete, when he wrote to me, I was kind of looking back, as I said, that women do, like scrutinising his profile like a forensic detective. And he had a line in there that's saying that he enjoyed lying on the sofa reading a book. And I thought, oh... That sounds lovely, like a bookish man. Of course, yeah. now at the weekend, I'm like, Pete, hey, get up, <laughs> put that book down, we've got stuff to do. But at the time, it drew me in. Yeah, no, somebody said to me, I love Gewürztraminer wine, that's my favourite. Nice. And I'm nuts about avocados, carrot cake and Brussels sprouts. It would be a match made in heaven, it really would. Yeah, yeah. So the third way and probably the most important way that you end up with the right person for you is to learn how to weed out time wasters or people that maybe aren't being honest. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's really imp important this and I know lots of people worry about it. In fact, one of our guests tonight has sent in the question. Jeffrey 61 asks, I've heard about people bankrupting people with different online dating agencies. How do you go about selecting someone? How do you know if they're genuine? So there are five really good signs that you're talking to someone who's genuine and honest. So the first thing to look for in the genuine, honest profiles is they're specific about who they're looking for. Now, anyone who's trying to attract a wide range of people for for bad reasons will try and attract as many people as possible so they're going to be the people who've got the profile saying i'm looking for a woman aged from 19 to 99 who's between four foot one and nine foot six who lives anywhere in the world they're going to be very non-specific so i want you to avoid those types of people i want you to go for people that look fussy because fussy people are honest people so look for someone who's obviously spent time 
choosing the kind of person that they're looking for so you know they're not just there to waste your time or just attract anyone for a bad reason the second thing is a genuine user will have a genuine profile photo of themselves where if someone who's pretending to be somebody else somebody better than them they will steal a photo from the internet and use that as their profile picture now you might know this already if you've ever seen the mtv program called catfish which is all about people who have accidentally just got in touch with someone who isn't who they genuinely are and then the men from catfish go and investigate and find out who the person really was behind the profile you'll have seen them do this so it's easy get maybe one of your grandkids or get your kids or get a techie friend or do it yourself if you're really comfortable doing it you need to do a reverse image search so you take a screenshot of their profile picture and then paste it into the reverse image search and then you can see if that picture has been used anywhere else on the internet and that will tell you a lot about the person ideally it won't have been used anywhere else or just be used on their facebook on their facebook profile but look for people who have obviously stolen someone else's identity because they're not who we want they're not another way to spot if someone's genuine is their life will be kind of boring it will just be normal when people are pretending to be someone else online, they usually upgrade. So they're not just saying, I'm a middle manager, I'm a ex retired bank account, bank manager. They'll make out it's all a bit mysterious, it's all a bit glamorous. They generally say that they work abroad for long periods of time. They might even say that they can't tell you what their job is, but it's very exotic. They kind of basically build themselves to be like a spy, a super spy. I want you to avoid those types of people. You also, Avoid the types of people that say that they work overseas a lot because usually what they're trying to do is just cover up the fact that they're not going to be in touch or lay down an excuse from the beginning of why they can't meet you in person. And again, that's a sign that they're not genuine. So don't be taken in by the really glamorous photo, by glamorous profiles. Another sign that someone is nice, normal and who they say they are is they'll be happy to chat over our time. They're not going to be pulling you away to get into messages and phone calls immediately they're not going to be saying things like my membership expires tomorrow so i'm really I'm, here's my mobile number look for people that are pacing the relationship and are happy to chat on our time and you don't have to move on to messages for things to get started i stayed i would i dated my husband on match which is our time sister site and i didn't give him my mobile number till our fourth date and we did all of our conversations over the match website and it's really nice actually because i've still got i could print out all the messages so i've got like a little record of all the lovely messages lovely. yeah but it also <laughs> means you could trust him yeah you know. And it also meant that if anything was sort of weird or suspicious, I could use the report a concern button and get someone to look into it. So I had safety. So you want to keep our time behind you mm. on your side. Yeah. And the last way to show that someone's genuine is that things will move at a nice steady pace. If someone's trying to draw you in, they will move things really quickly because they want you to fall in love with them. And, and It's all going to be really fast. It's going to be love, passion, promises, poetry. Uh, remember, we're, it's, we're English people, we're going to be talking to normal English people, so it's going to be kind of, it's going to plod. A nice, gentle, slow build up to relationship is usually more genuine than someone who has hearts and flowers straight away. Okay. Yeah, it had happened to a friend of mine. She Awful. fell in love with a young Turkish guy. Well, he fell in oh. love with her, but, you know, he wasn't long before he asked for, yeah. the, for the money. Any, any request for money, any yeah. request. Don't no, it's bad. Report no. concern. Yeah, no. Yeah, she wishes she had, she didn't. Yeah. But you know, anyway, anyway. Thank you. Brilliant advice, Case. And we've uh, Kate, and we've now got a few uh, more questions sent in advance. These are by members, but they're very relevant to this. Fiona Susan asks how to build rapport using text messages and how to discourage inappropriate messages. Inappropriate. <laughs> The best way to discourage inappropriate messages is just to ignore them. And if they're really inappropriate, then do contact our time for them to investigate. You don't want people spreading that kind of stuff around. But to build rapport, I'd rather that you met in person and don't spend 
too much time trying to build up that kind of text banter that you know i morning beautiful good night handsome because nah, nah, nah. it's really easy to fall in love with someone before you've met them with that kind of back and forth text messaging so i want you to meet them in person because we are not here are we julie to get pen pals we are nope. not nope no we're pen pals we're here to find a, a, yeah. a match a date a love companion a love. you yeah. know a relationship so put all that effort and interest into getting the report on dates so use the use the messaging on our time to to actually meet up in person to arrange that and then take it from there and let your natural spark yeah. take over i mean there's nothing wrong with pen pals that is you know they, 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 that's fine mm. but i guess it's pointless building up a massive text yeah. relationship to to find out that you meet and there's there's no genuine spark yeah. in in physically in real life yeah and yeah. there's all that emotional investment as well you can have yeah. like, you can spend two or three months talking to someone yeah. Telling them everything is for it to fizzle out when yeah. you've met. Yeah. Okay. Patrick sixty seven asks, when I see somebody I'd like to chat to, is it best to send a like first or to contact them straight away? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I would say a like mm. is flattering. You can add them to your favourites list. I always like that. But I would say send a message. Um, send a message women are kind of are wary of anyone who's just going to string them along or, or waste their time so i would get in there straight away with the message remember the nice message asking that open-ended question something would be fun to answer message fantastic okay doke um calvin asks why can't i get past the first coffee calvin so 59 calvin 59 so getting dates calvin is a really good sign so there's there's good news here which is your profile and your photos are obviously working because you are going out on dates that's absolutely brilliant i would say that the main reasons first dates don't lead to second dates is usually unmet expectations so if you haven't been quite so honest as you could have done about maybe your height or you've used photos that aren't really recognizable at how you are today maybe you know if you use one from five years ago or you've used the photos that quite a lot of men use which is a tiny little holiday photo where they're like three pixels <laughs> in front of a pyramid <laughs> those kind of things so make sure that your profile is really selling you as you are so you might not get as much as many coffee dates as you were before but those coffee dates are much more likely to lead to second dates because someone came to meet you and was delighted with the you that showed up quality over quantity yes it always wins out okay thank you kate that's that's brilliant um and it's now time for the results of our second survey so um we asked you have your friends ever told you that you're too fussy i wonder if you can guess the result 40 percent said yes you are too fussy we've told you know you've been told mm. you're too fussy 60 percent says no that's good that's really good so He's most going people are being nice. open yeah love yeah. it yeah, good for fantastic. you Great. good job sum up this uh, chapter for us Kate. so to find genuine people i want you to write your love cv and learn about who makes you happy i want you to focus on the things that you love to do and find someone who can share those with you and then keep an eye out for people that might not be the real deal. Thank you.